They say that true friends can grow separately without growing apart. I've made many friends all over the world, but I still come back to the first friendships I made with my grade school and high school buddies. In this episode, my classmates and I head for Palawan for a relaxed retreat. Catching up in the tranquil shores of Puerto Princesa and enjoying an island all to ourselves. Ateneo was a place where lifelong friendships were formed, amidst the halls of learning. My classmates and I, once strangers to each other, would grow up together and shape each other's lives in profound ways. Our younger years were filled with innocent joys and maybe not so innocent misadventures. In our adolescence, we navigated the maze of self-discovery and teenage woes. From field trips, drama club performances, and schoolyard antics. While life led us to different paths and far-off cities over the years, we've tried to keep in touch wherever we are in the world. From the base of Buzwanga to the streets of New York, to the beaches of Boracay and Sikogon, our reunions became a cherished tradition. A time to reminisce about the old days and laugh about the follies of our youth. Gatherings which I've tried to document as much as I can. This time, we thought of visiting Puerto Princesa to enjoy its lush, natural surroundings and to visit its underground river, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Our characters, we have Tony Alieje, Ting Antonio, Alex Cabrera, June Dalandan, Boof Goso, Chi Lacuna, Boyet Mangubat, Bing Midel, Dodi Sigyon Reyna, Roji Tanko, Tony Valencia, J.R. Bautista, and myself. Of course, the trip was not without its hitches and hijinks. Lost luggage? More like a senior moment for Tony. I was glad to be back in Puerto Princesa. The capital city of Palawan is the gateway to its natural wonders. The last time I was here, I was able to experience its stunning scenery like its thick mangrove forests and its culinary delights made of the freshest ingredients. I hope to share this experience with my classmates. We arrived, expecting to get into the famed underground river. But the waters turned out to be too rough and visiting the caves would be dangerous. Maybe that would be too extreme an adventure for these old men. So we just hung out on Sabang Beach to catch up and bask in the scenery. We've been planning this trip for the whole batch and it was actually Bing who wanted to go to this underground river, right? And so we all woke up very early and we're all very sleepy now. And unfortunately, the waves are so big that we are unable to take the boat. Bing, is this your pet? No. Are you okay? I thought he followed you all the way from uh, New Jersey. And uh, Tony was the first one who decided on Palawan, right? Yeah. And, and I'm very happy Alex is able to make it. Alex, first time to first go time, in the group, yeah. right? But JR, we've been going in the college activities. So we're stuck here, but I think we're going to have a good lunch and enjoy each other's company. I have with us my two favorite doctors. Of course, Boyet, he looks after my eye. 
and uh, Roger, he looks after my heart. What if I'm broken hearted, Roger? You'll never get broken hearted. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Ting, I'm going to borrow money from him. That's why I want to be friends with him all the time. <laughs> Two friends, both from Florida, and they're here. Ex-Florida. Ex-Florida. And now, Tagaytay. Tagaytay, oh, yes. And, and Boo's still in Florida. Still in Florida. Trying to convince him to move over. Anyway. All his friends are here. That's right. The real friends. But uh, Boo has been my friend since what? Grade? Grade, yeah. grade school. Grade school. Grade school, no? And we were neighbors. And yes. uh, oh, okay. Boo always gave me a ride every time we go somewhere. So... I, uh, I'm indebted to him. I will be his driver for the rest of uh, his life. <laughs> no, remember we were three guys. Andre. Andre. Andre Rodriguez. Yes. But Andre is not feeling very well. And uh, But of course, he'd like to join us if he could. Yeah, I remember you, you drew, we were grade seven. Yes. You were already driving this white Cadillac. Oh. Yes. Right? Yes. Grade seven. Grade yes. seven. Okay. No, we didn't have a license as we still drove. Yeah, he, he and, was already driving this. And Andre also was driving his Mercedes, the right. white Mercedes. Yeah. Yeah. So they were the ones who were polluting my mind. But in reality, it was Andre who influenced me to be a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> because he's not here. Yeah. Yeah. Those were fun times. Yeah. Fun times. It seems a lot of people know me because without this guy, my school without career would never have started. I just show up to his plate one day with my scuba tank and everything like, can I try this? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, then don't die. And this is in Florida? <laughs> no, this house. is here. In oh, Kansas City, okay, okay. swimming pool. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that's where Roger got traumatized. That's why he doesn't know how to swim. <laughs> Tony, Gigi and you are staying in Teta and you're enjoying yes. the weather. Oh, exactly. But is he well behaved? I always don't worry get him about started. that. Don't get him <laughs> Masugit, because he's an old man. man. <laughs> he's a great friend. Uh, yes. I think everybody, everybody feels that way. Thank you. And uh, glad that he's able to make it every year to join us. Though our first day didn't go as planned, we shared a sumptuous lunch and more catching up before we continued with the rest of our adventure. Up next, we indulge in the natural splendor of a luxury island retreat right in the middle of Puerto Princesa. From Sabang Beach, we went to check into our hotel for the next few days. Princesa Garden Island Resort right in the heart of the capital. We received a very warm welcome from the staff and immediately felt right at home. Princesa Garden Resort sits on a sprawling property punctuated by pools, gardens, and coconut trees swaying in the breeze. got to stay in one of their water villas where the mangrove forest meets the sea. Tranquility enveloped the room facing the water. Luxury and comfort come together to create a true sanctuary for any tired guest. Our mornings were welcomed by an extensive breakfast buffet at the Rice Restaurant. It features a wide selection, not just of breakfast favorites, but also of local and international cuisines. Before enjoying more of the hotel's amenities, I got to sit down and chat with Angelo Lizares, the hotel's operations manager, who tells me more about the resort. So Jello, how did uh, Puerto Princesa Gardens come about? So uh, Princesa Garden uh, came about. Our visionary uh, architect Liko actually came here in, in a not planned uh, visit. Mm -hmm. He stood in one of our amenities, the sandbar, and he saw this property and 
he felt escaped completely from his problems, from from the hustle and bustle of the city. And right there and then, he, he fell in love with the property. So that's where he built uh, this property. We opened 2015 oh, and okay. they never looked back. So <laughs> I've been going around, I've been seeing a lot of stuff. Uh, can you tell me more what the facilities of the hotel? Oh, absolutely. Yes, the property is 78 rooms. Yeah, I like the room, especially by uh, the pools. Yes, uh, yes, We all yes. enjoy that and uh, all my buddies are just uh, <laughs> enjoying themselves in the pool. One of our main products, which is the water villas that we, uh, we sell, yes. is the most expensive um, accommodation that we have. It is housed in... Uh, in a mangrove area. That's right. So um, we could have uh, built in a better part of the ocean where it's blue waters, but we picked to build in the mangrove areas because we wanted to uh, promote the, the mangroves here in the Philippines and to help it preserve it as well. Actually, uh, we have a program. It's part of our environmental sustainability program that to really help associations and companies that uh, help preserve the mangrove. So, part of the proceeds of our water villa revenue uh, goes, to that. goes to that as well. So, Well, I enjoy walking around there, seeing the birds and yes, uh, yes, yes. the fish. Not resting on their achievements, Princesa Garden looks to the future with new developments. As you can see at behind me as well, um, we are expanding. We are uh, within building. the yeah. We're building a yeah. 150 more rooms. Wow! And then it's a seven-floor building, but on the seventh floor we're gonna have um, additional amenities. We're gonna have state-of-the-art spa, state-of-the-art uh, gym as well. We're gonna open one more restaurant. It's uh, gonna be a bar and restaurant. Don't forget state-of-the-art helipada. Huh? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And then. Um, of course, we're gonna have another banquet facilities as well. We're actually one of the one of the main uh, properties here in Perth Princesa that is ASEAN certified as well. So mm -hmm. we're very known for our uh, banquet facilities as well. They are also known for the delectable cuisine they serve, made of the freshest local ingredients. Right now, we are open two outlets already. So one is a. Uh, the tomato and basil restaurant, which is our uh, Italian restaurant. Yes. And then one is a rice restaurant where we have our buffet breakfast. The hotel is also proud of their environmental efforts. Can you tell us about the hotel's uh, sustainability practices? Absolutely. Um, we actually have a lot of sustainability initiatives here at the resort. Four main um, initiatives that we practice, as you can see all over the the resort. We have a lot of uh, driftwood and um, stones that we recycle to make us uh, furniture design pieces as well. Mm -hmm. We also invested in uh, alternative energy where um, we use solar panels as well. So basically around 20 to 30% of our utilities are solar powered. We are very big in environment. But one of the, our main and the most proud initiative is for sustainability is mm -hmm. the people. So. Our staff is 95% um, local hired, and we are actually planning to have an initiative where we're gonna hire uh, physically um, impaired people to be part of our staff for them to have a livelihood as well. That's great. So, why is it important to uphold these practices, especially here in Palawan, especially for resorts in Palawan? Our owner, our, uh, our visionary of the resort, is one of the main proponents of, of sustainability. He's an architect and he designed this property himself. So he designed it in mind where he used sustainability materials, sustainability practices. I think, you know, to uphold the livelihood and the industry here in Palawan, we could really uh, help out and have a sustainability initiatives that we can promote not only here in the resort but in the city as well. Well, thank you very much for uh, accommodating all of us, including my friends. Everyone enjoyed the place and uh, uh, the food was good too. Thank you, thank you. Uh, coming from this area, it's our pleasure to have you here, sir, and uh, we're very honored to, to have you visit our, our property. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Captain. <laughs> That evening, my classmates and I visited the Tomato and Basil restaurant for an authentic Italian dinner. Tony, how did you find your room? It's a very nice room. We're in the ground floor of a three-story building. From our room, we have access to the swimming pool. You know, Joy, I was surprised to, uh, to see this resort inside 
the Puerto the, the city itself. 55 minutes away from Manila. You know, they have this uh, tomato and basil restaurant. Mm -hmm. And they have a serious uh, brick oven. That's why the pizza looks so good. And it smells, from, the, from this distance, I can smell the aroma. Very typical Italian pizza. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're looking for something to Italian or something foreign while you're in Puerto, I think this is the place to go. Yeah, Italian pizza with local ingredients from yes, Palawan. Yes, yes, yes. Mm, good. Very, very Italian. The dressing is perfect. What dressing did you get? It's vinaigrette. Vinaigrette. The prawns are very, very fresh. But it's great to get a chance to get together. I mean, how many years? 50 years since high school? But we all see each other. I see you every time I have an eye problem. <laughs> I see Dodi before in the office all the time. <laughs> it's good, huh? It's good. Cheers to having a Cheers. good Cheers. company and good place to be in. Cheers. Cheers. After a filling dinner, there was still time to cap off the evening with soothing bossa nova music and a drink or two at the Sala Lobby Lounge. I could tell that this was JR's favorite part of the hotel. Up next, we embark on an island adventure, one that took us to an uninhabited part of Palawan to enjoy the sand, surf, and seafood all to ourselves. We are still enjoying the idyllic shores of Puerto Princesa. Since we could not visit the famed underground river, I decided to talk to my good friend Kokoy Asis, who offered us a one-of-a-kind island adventure instead. After a drive to the jetty, we will be boarding a boat that would take us to Bugias Island, whose sandy white shores could already be seen from the distance. Kokoy happens to be the owner of the island, and he was letting us have it all to ourselves for the day. Together with my pilot friends and guests from France, my classmates and I boarded the boat that would take us to this private escape. They even have priority seating, but no one wanted to take it. Kokoy's boat went ahead, bringing with it an entire feast. Not to mention the most important cargo. We arrived to find an inviting crystal beach with pristine white sand. There, an incredible lunch setup waiting for us. While everyone enjoyed the sights, I was happy to catch up with Kokoy, a good friend whom I rode horses with from way back. So, oh, it's uh, great to be uh, going out again. It's been a while since we got together. I think our last beach outing was when? Boracay? Boracay. That was way, way back, 20 years ago. And uh, I remember when we brought the kids to Singapore. Uh, the two boys are still very small. Yes. And now they're adults. Oh my God, time really flies. So, thank you for inviting us in this island. I mean, we're very lucky to be invited. I know this place is uninhabited, and you have prepared a great meal for us. Thank you very much. You're most welcome, Joy. Um, this was all made possible because of you. No, because of you. <laughs> Your efforts, of course. Boy, how long was our drive? It was not too long, right? It's about an hour, uh, 45 minutes to an hour? It was a short drive. Um, the traffic conditions were favorable. It took us around 40 minutes from the town uh, from the town to Barangay Manalo. And we were fortunate that the uh, owner of the resort where we uh, boarded the boat allowed us to yes. take the boat yeah. to our island. I see. Now, 
it took us only 15 minutes from that resort that's which is right. located that's in right. Barangay Manalo to reach Bugias. So you call this Bugias? Bugias. I think I like the sound of Cocois Island more than Bugias. <laughs> Bugias, aka Barlas. Barlas also is what they call it. Yes. What areas uh, are near this uh, island? Behind the uh, island is uh, the famous Dos Palmas Resort. I see. We okay. are just uh, 10 minutes by pump boat yes. away from uh, Dos Palmas Resort. Mm. How big is this? 10 hectares, you say? The um, alienable and disposable part of the island it has a total of 10 hectares. Mm -hmm. But relatively, the island has grown in size since then. Uh, the mangroves and everything, so... Keep on growing. Keep on growing. And nobody touches this since you purchased it in 1996, right? Yes. In fact, this, this is the first event that this island had, and this is very memorable. Since then, no event was held in this island. And you made special toilets even for us. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when your dad decided to purchase it, what did he have in mind? Was he thinking of having a resort or just uh, banking the place? My father invest, bought this property initially for investment. Then later on, he had the idea of uh, developing the uh, island as, but as a resort. Uh, the idea went on and off, so the, the island remained uninhabited, undeveloped. It's in its virgin natural state until now. Great! I think uh, there's so much sea life when uh, the people were swimming. But what do you intend to do after this? Uh, we, we're having so much fun. Will you lend me the island every other week so I can come here and have lunch? I'm just a phone call away. <laughs> But what did you plan to do? Do you plan to keep it forever? The family has not decided on anything yet. Well, it would be nice, you know, if there would be offers to our family regarding the uh, island, then uh, we could consider. That would be good. I think uh, I have to break uh, too many piggy banks so I cannot afford to <laughs> But you're my friend, so I'm lucky. I can come anytime without buying. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, of course. We will uh, prepare everything for you when you come back. Lunch was soon served, complete with lechon and a wide array of the freshest seafood. My classmates and I really enjoyed the feast, especially with this kind of view. This is something we could really get used to. After more catching up, we boarded the boats again to go to a sandbar close to the island. We enjoyed swimming in the warm turquoise waters. We were lucky to have been introduced to this spot by Coco and his sons. Though perhaps, Picture taking was not a very good idea since we all just had a big meal. We ended the day with a visit to Kinabuch, a famous Puerto Princesa restaurant known for serving the best local fare. Half a century, that's how long? since we last roamed the halls of the Ateneo. We've known each other even longer than that. Time may have added more gray hair, more weight, more lines, but it also added more experiences and stories to tell. It was great to be able to spend time with my classmates, but we definitely cannot wait for 50 more years Till our next reunion. This is Winner Captain Joy Roa. See you in the next Asian Air Safari! <laughs> <laughs>